in other regions, we have in other processes, we have in other logics. But when we have can, when we can find solution on the small arena, we have more stable situation. Because if you have Arsakh as gray zone, we understand that global war of terrorism and irregular activity is very, very <laughs> easy to work in gray zones. And if you have having South Caucasus in Armenia and Arsakh gray zone, it will be more difficult for geopolitical centers of power to control the situation. And we have the same attitude, the same result which we have in the Middle East in Syria, Libya, North Africa, et cetera, et cetera. I think when we talk about Tur Turkey, there's one concept that is flooding the news sites currently, pan-Turkism. Maybe can you reflect on this term in the context we just discussed? I think that it is the ideological and theoretical construction now, not geopolitical, not regional, not real. pan is very dangerous, of course, but it is only idea now. I think we must constrain our analysis and speak about the unification of two Turkish states, Azerbaijan and Turkey. I hope you know this uh, attitude to state one nation when Azerbaijan and Turkey was one nation but two states but now we see that uh, two turkish state united in one uh, reality because now we was in a fight not with azerbaijan but turkish the real solutions the real decisions in our conflict take place in turkey from the general staff of turkey is not azerbaijan and we understand that now we have one state in one nation, Azerbaijan and Turkey. And we have situation when two states try to construct unified, uni, uh, united uh, reality, where we have two states, Turkey and Azerbaijan. Of course, it may be as plots down for pan Turkism, pan Osmanism, etc., etc., in the future, because Erdogan very populistic firms speak about this. <clears throat> but in reality, I think we can, we must speak and we must agree and uh, agree with reality when we have one wide state, Turkish state, which we could include Republic of Turkey and Republic of Azerbaijan. And in potentials in the futures, this reality can transform in pan-Osmanic project, project or maybe pan-Turkism project. But uh, now I don't see that all Turkish states can unite it today. It isn't a political problem. It is, I repeat, it is ideological and uh, theoretical constructions. But the construction when we have united Turkish and Azerbaijan, it is already political reality. It isn't construction. It isn't ideological. It isn't framework. It is reality when these two states united. Unfortunately, uh, till now, Armenian two states, de facto Artsakh and Republic of Armenia cannot uh, complete unification. We can solve this problem. But Turkish part, another part of conflict, already solve this problem. And it is more dangerous, I think. It, it is changing the situation in our region, drastically for a changing situation. We cannot speak about South Caucasus in isolations. Mm -hmm. And if you speak about a new regional security system, it may be more wide than we have today. Post-Soviet period of uh, South Caucasus history is complete. With this war, we finalize this period. It must speak in other situation, in other narrations, in other attitude, in other strategy, etc., etc. It is very important for international community, for think tank, for think tank, etc., etc., to understand that the reality of post-Soviet times not exist now, and therefore trying to find to find solutions in already complete times isn't work. We spare time, but having solutions. Okay. For solutions, we must speak about futures, and. And in the solution based in the reality. 
In post-Soviet, in Soviet caucus reality, we have Republic of Artsakh, which on four weeks is in a very hard war, very hard conventional war of new type with Turkish. Yeah. I think it is uh, this time only the East uh, to show that uh, Artsakh Republic is reality. It isn't fake news. It isn't artificial uh, state, etc., etc. It is reality, and we must maybe we can agree with this reality and starting to work with reality, but not try to transform things because we must. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can say that we speak with you in the situation of war. And therefore, the time is very, very specific uh, parameters for us. And so would you say that the war from the, that is waging on today, um, starting on the 27th of September, was it enabled directly through the means of Turkey? So if Turkey would not have been involved there would have been no war today. That's Turkey try now to directly participate in the Artsakh processes or Artsakh problem you know about him. But uh, we have the Minsk group. The Minsk group was uh, designed by geopolitical centers of power, co-chairmen, United States for America, France and Russia. And I think it is the problem, not Armenians, uh, but the problem of co chairmen uh, But they say very stateful and uh, very strong that Turkish cannot participate in these processes. The geopolitical centers of power do not agree with Turkish direct participation in diplomatic and political process around our war. Turkish now participate in the processes through war, through military tools. In the first part, the first time, the first step and the task is to prevent Turkish for this. Constrain Turkish for working with military tools on the geopolitical arena now. Okay, but then that's, that's very interesting because if we look at the evolution of Turkish-Armenian relationships, they, I think we can say, deteriorated. And I know in 1994, we have the Treaty of Kars, which effectively prevented any movement between the Armenian-Turkish border. However, if we look in more recent trade data, I think trade between um, Armenia and Turkey amassed to around $300 million, while between Turkey and Azerbaijan, $0. So essentially, they are like a, it's a slippery slope, and I would interpret this as in general there was an improvement. However, what happened to deteriorate the relationships to such extent that Turkey is now supplying arms to Azerbaijan and paying uh, international mercenaries to become involved? And um, is it in a personality question, say Erdogan? Or is it more a national attitude that deteriorated? Mm, you touch a very, very important problem. And we unfortunately must discuss and speak about another part of the problem which explode our world. Unfortunately, or oh, thanks God, maybe thanks God, I think about <laughs> can say that thanks God, we must constate now that the Moscow Treaty of 1921 do not work. The Moscow, I repeat again, the Moscow Treaty of 1921 do not work. It was explored by Turkish when they, with military tools, called in the Caucasus. <clears throat> in that time, uh, Bolsheviks and Kemalists, Bolsheviks, Russians and Kemalists, Turkish, have agreement about Armenian futures. You know about it, and uh, we have the boundaries in South Caucasus as the uh, part of this uh, treaty. And Nagorno-Karabakh, it Nakhichivan will was included in Azerbaijan as the one of the part of these treaties between Turkish and Russia. But now, when Turkish involved directly in the spheres of interests of Russia, it means that these treaties do not work. 
Turkey leave these treaties. And now we haven't any international law which form, which provide framework for South Caucasus because Moscow Treaty was the last treaty of international cooperation in Lausanne 23. And these two treaties, Lausanne treaties and Moscow Treaty do not work now. Therefore, international arena in the theoretical framework, as constructing theoretical framework, must agree and understand that we need a new treaties for in which on the base which we can start to construct new framework for regions, security construct for security framework for regions, international framework for regions. The source cause now is disappear because disappear Moscow Treaty. And we have only the, the solutions of League of Nations League and uh, Wilson's Antitrust as the base for any solutions. Any treaties we haven't now. And it is very dangerous, of course, because we have vacuum now. Vacuum was what very deliberately constructed by Turkey. You know, of course, you recall that Adel Gagan says that Lausanne's treaty is not appropriate for Turkish. You recall this is what. And now, Erdogan, with participation in the Awa war, explored Lausanne Treaty and Moscow Treaty. But it is a theoretical part of, <laughs> very important but theoretical part of our pro pro problems and our war problems. And again, we can starting not with the framework, hard white framework, but maybe we can start with the one, the first part, the step for constructing this framework. And for the recognition of Arsakh, maybe the recognition of Arsakh became the first stone of the new framework, of the new international treaties, which form and transform South Caucasus, Caucasus, Middle East, and construct new international order. I hope you will read in the articles when the, our, our conflict interpreted as the conflict which can transform international order. In our previous uh, talking, we speak about geopolitical arena, but maybe we must go more harder and speak about the international order which form now, but it is so important and it's so wide and deep that I don't think that we can <laughs> in one talking I speak about this. Maybe. But I want to accent that in all these processes, in all these arenas, in all these frameworks, security frameworks for South Caucasus, security framework for more wide regions, international order, etc., etc. The recognitions of Arsakh can be the first stone which stabilizes the situation. We can starting our constructions, our way for new world, starting with recognition of Arsakh. If you don't do it, we expose the situation. We cannot find the solution. And then um, in, in your previous analysis, you brought up the concept of the new world order. And I think um, like two famous authors also brought a book out, Dr. Richard Haas and Henry K Kissinger's on the world order. Essentially saying we came after the breakup of the Soviet Union from the bipolar world order to chaos to a new multipolar world order. So I know it's a big topic, but do you think there is a natural consequence of a bi multipolar world order in the events in the security system of the South Caucasus? Because now there's not any single leader, but there are many interests involved. Yes, And of course. You are, I agree with you, but we must understand, again, recall the indicator, the problem of time the construction of new framework of internet, new international orders can take place during years and dozen years. We can 
the call is Falians <laughs> world order, <laughs> how many times it was constructed. But uh, we can, it, we must speak about these processes, these problems, but must find solution today. And the solution of recognition of Artsakh, the situation where we agree with the de facto states, Artsakh became the recognized sites of Artsakh. And in that time, we avoid and leave previous international order systems and go to the new. And we can, I think that the way when we go with the recognition of Artsakh is more stable. More stable for Armenian, more stable for South Caucasus, more stable for Caucasus, more stable for East, Middle East, and wide Middle East. And now we speak about maybe more stable for international order. Because we speak about chaos, you speak about unpredictable evaluation, evaluation or evolving of processes. And I think in this hard, very chaotic, situation is maybe we can agree that Artsakh is stable, that Artsakh is, exists, the Artsakh is stone, not processes, not fluid reality, but stone, stable base, and having the stable base, stable base on this situation is more and more preferable solutions and having <laughs> I think therefore I think all peoples who really interest in stabilization in more wide more stable worlds can must understand that I, my nation my people my state of Republic Artsakh have right in this new world in this new international order do not try to eliminate us, to destroy us. It is not a good solution, I think. I, it's, I think it's a <laughs> duty to d let live and let create and not to destroy. So um, today, unfortunately, our conversation nears its end. Yes. <laughs> Um, I would like to give you the opportunity. Do you have any concluding remarks? Would you like to point out any last messages or send some greetings? We must stop this war. We must recognize ourselves. We must have a more stable situation. In that time, we, of course, can continue in our conversations and try to understand how we can construct more stable European system of security, international security systems, and international order. I am ready for working, for exchanging, for lectures, etc., etc. I am open. Artsakh is open for all these processes. And I hope we can we get together, starting find solutions. And the first part and first step in the solution is to understand and agree that Artsakh is reality. Artsakh is stable reality. Artsakh is very hard and very spiritual reality. We don't speak about civilizations or this, about civilizations, rules of Artsakh. We are very powerful reality. And I think we can and must participate in the construction of new world. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very powerful word. We thank you for your perspectives and uh, analysis. And um, it was our honor to welcome you here at Faces of Armenia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.